One thing uh, that everyone notices about the Twilight phenomenon is that the ages of the readers vary significantly. I mean, in my own life, my 10-year-old niece is reading it. I'm reading it. A um, woman in her 40s, a grandmother in her 60s is reading it. And we can all talk to each other. We're all either on Team Edward or Team Jacob. And, <laughs> um, and I think the same thing can be said about classics and what we try to, to what, what our aim is for Penguin Classics. So why do you think Twilight is good for the classics and good for drawing people to classic literature? Because it's such a phenomenon, Stephanie Meyer and these books have the power to send all the readers of Twilight, you know, searching for these other books. And it's been, it's actually fun to see the, the different fan groups and off, I guess, offshoots that Twilight is um, sparking. All these readers who are craving more, more Edward and more Bella and where else can they find it? And it's great. Yes. And, you know, here at Penguin, we're preparing for that with, which I, I just showed you the cover for Wuthering Heights that we have coming out with a new design by fashion illustrator Ruben Toledo. And you know, we were discussing the gothic mood of the artwork. So we hope that it will appeal to Twilight readers. And I was thinking about, you know, you teach literature you, and you, you've taught gothic lit. What classics would you suggest to Bella that she should read and why? I would have to say Dracula. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> so, if, I mean, if you're going to date a vampire, <laughs> you really got to read the original vampire novel. And I think she would find Edward even uh, far more appealing <laughs> than, than Dracula, though, who's the vampire before, before the vampire turned vegetarian. The ultimate bad boy boyfriend would yes. be Dracula. You know, I don't, I don't think this is too hard for you to explain, but... As a reader, a writer, and a professor, what do you find the most appealing about Dracula? Is it your favorite classic? It's definitely up there. I read Dracula once every, I don't know, every year, every other year. And I remember the first time I read it. It was on my shelf. I had a shelf of books of classics that I would always want to read here and there. And I picked that one up off the shelf. And I remember I opened it and I closed it like 100 page la pages later and only because I had to go somewhere. And it was, when I was reading it, I was telling people I decided it was the airport fiction of its time because it takes you to all these different places. And it's just, it's a wonderful horror novel, but without all the gore. And what other classics do you recommend in terms of they're finished with Twilight and finished with Dracula? Are there a, one or two other classics that you would recommend? Well, there is, of course, the sister who, you know, Bronte sister who wrote Jane Eyre. And we have a book for that as well. We have the Bronte <laughs> sisters, um, which is a, a beautiful Penguin Classics deluxe edition, which has the best-selling novel of each of the three sisters. We have Wuthering Heights, Jane Eyre, and Agnes Grey all in one edition. And, um, well, thank you, Donna, for talking about Bella's Bookshelf, Vampires, Twilight, Bronte sisters, and I look forward to getting back to Eclipse. Any last words? Team Jacob out. <laughs> <laughs> we can duke it out later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>